Hello there, I'm Dave Allen, I'm good and geeky. And although I use BB Edit for my text editor, and I also use Drafts for a place to actually get text into the system, and then to send to wherever I want with the actions that's available, because there's some good automation in Drafts. I also sometimes have a need for a text editor within the command line. And it's easier to stay in the command line and to basically do it from there. And I've discovered an application called NeoVim, and it's really good. I mean, you could use Nano, but you don't get that much in the way of things you can do with Nano, much features. It's very, very simple. And if you're a beginner with using a text editor in the, the command line, then probably Nano is the best for you. But if you're good and geeky, you might want to have a look at NeoVim. So here we are looking at NeoVim in the uh, browser here, and it's easy enough to install. You just got to click on this bit here, install now. And follow this down here, and you've got your details on how to do it. Basically, you're going to copy this bit here and uh, do that. Or you could do it with uh, Brew, install NeoVim. I think I did it with Brew because it's probably the easiest one. And of course, you can go for uh, Mac ports, sudo and all that sort of stuff. Again, that's from the command line. What you want to do after you've installed it, though, is you want to go to a YouTube. And it's um, a fellow called Hosean. It's easy enough to find if you do a uh, Hosean and NeoVim search in YouTube. And I'll put the link into the description anyway. And you can do a lot more stuff with Nervium. And basically, it's a complicated, long, old setup there to follow his, his tutorial, but it can be done. Another way to do it would be to go to either Lazy Vim or there's another one called Kickstart Vim. And you can just basically sort of install that with a script. And it's another way to get it set up and get the basics of what's there. And it takes it from being an okay sort of editor to one that you can do a lot of stuff with. Let's actually have a look at NeoVim now and see what we've got here. Let's move this out of the way. So here I am in Warp. And Warp is a really good terminal application. And I would much prefer using it than iTerm or the one that comes with the Mac OS system. So Warp is really good because it's, it's it just works a whole lot better and it's easier to use in this modern in the way that it works. And I went back to iTerm just the other day just to have a look there and there's a lot of things that you just don't get like you don't get the filling in of what text uh, what what text you put in there to help you get to where you want to go to and to get the commands done that you want. Um, Warp is marvellous if you're using the command line. I highly recommend it. It's only on the Mac at the moment. And at some point in time, it will go to other applications or other operating systems as well. So I'd like to see it on Linux so I can use it on the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, let's have a look at this here. And I'm going to start up NVim. NVim is what you type in there if you haven't created an alias. I've created an alias and I just have to type in NV. And that's an alias for NVim. So I've typed in NV and then a space and it's already given me some folders and some documents to look at in the pop-up from Warp. On the actual command line there you can see the sensitive.md file which was something that I worked on earlier which is why it's showing up now and it's been offered to me by Warp. I've just got to do the right arrow key, press enter and it'll open up in NeoVim. Now the good thing about NeoVim is that you can send your cursor to where you want it really easily. So if I want to go to the end of the line, I do a dollar sign, and that goes to the end of the line. If I want to go to the beginning of the line, I press in a zero, and it goes to the beginning of the line. If I want to go to the end of the file, I've just got to do Shift and G. Now these commands, sometimes they're not that sort of intuitive. You have to sort of remember a whole lot of these things. And I've found that a good idea is to put in a stickies file somewhere on your computer there, and you can sort of give yourself some reminders until you've got them into your... Um, into your uh, muscle memory so that you can keep using them. I'm on the 14th line. And if I want to go to line eight up from where I am, all I've got to do is uh, 8K and there I am. And uh, now I'm on line, you can see that I'm on line six. And these numbers are relative numbers. So if I want to go to the line which starts the other possibilities is that, that's two lines above. So uh, if I want to do 2K, and let's go to that line there. If I want to come down to where it says one way is for you to create a file, all I've got to do is uh, 6J. So that gets you moving around. And with this system as well, with uh, what Jose and did was is he set up a few sort of uh, shortcuts. And if I do a leader, which is the space bar, so if I do leader E, so this brings up a file tree. So you can get to other files and do your editing there. So, for instance, if I want to go to, let's say, I want to go to, to Argonaut, if I want to go to Pages, 
I've got a pages there. And this is what I've got in Obsidian. So this is the Obsidian vault. I can edit these within this here as well. So let's say I want to go to uh, books, press enter. I'm going to, go to Artemis.md. And this is uh, a book I've read. I haven't put much into this. It was an enjoyable read. Good pacing. Plenty of tech info to make it more believable. Oh, that's the one where um, there's. Uh, it's, it's based on the moon. It's by um, the guy that wrote The Martian. I enjoyed that. It was good. In fact, it says there Annie Weir, and the author's name is Andy Weir. So if I want to start doing any type into this there, I put the cursor to where I want it to be, and I'm going to press A, and now it puts it after where the cursor was. I press the D, and it's bringing up uh, some text. If I wanted it to um, fill in that text there, I've just got to select that and press Enter. So I haven't got the rest of the word in there already. It would just uh, make it perfectly correct. So that's kind of good. If I just uh, move the uh, cursor on, then it'll come off the uh, text filling in, which is something which Jose and set up, and I just basically followed his um, lead on how to do it. And it's fairly easy, although it's a long old thing there. And I found that you do have to make sure that you get the text exactly right, because obviously it's a, a programming language. It's all set up in Lua. And if you miss off um, a word here or there, or a single quote or double quote, you might not get what you're looking for. It's not going to work. And you have to go back in there and look for where you made the mistake. It can be a bit annoying at times, but you, you get there in the end. And it's part of being good and geeky and doing the sort of uh, programming sort of stuff anyway. Now, one of the things that people really don't know about with using NeoVim or Vim is that how to get out the file and how to save it. I want to save this file now. So it's in insert mode at the moment. Let's just get rid of the, um, the file tree, first of all. Let's press escape. Let's go into normal mode. Then I'll do leader E. So that gets rid of the files that I was looking at. And I'm in this uh, file here now, and I want to save it. And to do that, I'm going to do uh, colon and write and quit. So that's quite easy you could just do that and it's going to save the file and it's come out of NeoVim. Show you something else with uh, warp that I like if I want to go to the NeoVim folder if I type in Z because I've got Zoxide installed and I want to go to NeoVim so I'm just going to type in NV is that going to go there let's have a look press enter and see so that's just taking me to the folder dot config forward slash NVim and I didn't have to go back like uh, into the uh, home folder and then back up and back in. I was like, Zoxide was able to find that for me and get where I needed to go to. And it did it really easily. It's got that fuzzy finder sort of thing, which is why I only had to type in a couple of letters and it got the rest of the way. So again, if I want to go back, I want to go into documents again. If I wanted to go to Z and then one level up in, and then forward slash and then another level up, that'll take me to the home folder. So now I'm in the home folder. Then I go to documents, so I'm going to do a Z, and I can just type in doc, and it brings up the rest of it for me. It's good like that, so I can press enter, and then press enter again, and it's got me into the documents folder. This is a quick look at what I've done with Warp and NeoVim, and I uh, thoroughly recommend you give it a try if you want to be good and geeky. Go for it. So I'm Dave Allen. If you've got something from this video, go and uh, subscribe so that you can get more of the tutorials. OK, so now it's time to hack the YouTube algorithm and put a like on there. What you can also do is put a comment on there. You can say what you'd like me to make a tutorial about. And if I can do it, then I will. OK, I'm Dave Allen. I'm good and geeky. Bye bye now. Talk to you again soon.